one of the things that we're trying to to do at our uh, humble little nonprofit newspaper and so forth is is bring sort of um, a little order to the madness, you know, some civility, some rationality um, to decisions that, that that people are you know having to make that affect them you know, in their hometowns and so forth. Um, I wish I could uh, extend that out to our national media and our national politics and so forth. But, uh, but I think uh, one, one small town north of Boston is, is about uh, as, as much as I can handle at this point. Every once in a while, there's going to be, or, you know, or, or actually quite regularly, there's going to be um, some tough decisions that have to be made, some, you know, tough situations that make come up, you know, you, there may be, um, you know, government corruption, or there may be uh, police misconduct, or, you know, what have you. And, um, you know, to help the community through that, you really need sort of an, an authoritative source that's fair minded, and that's gonna uh, bring some some rigor to um, exploring those issues um, that you're just not going to get from you know, from a Facebook page or from, uh, you know, a community volunteer. And, uh, you know, so I, I think, you know, that that's sort of like the, the short version of the answer is that hopefully what we're bringing is um, a voice to the conversation that is measured, that is thorough, that is rational, um, that shows its work, you know, that, that, you um, you know, gives you sort of the the source documents on which it is basing its reporting and so forth, you know, and and I think all those things are sort of desperately needed, not just in Marblehead, but elsewhere. I mean, that's sort of one of the things that uh, I think a lot of us connected with the current are um, a little bit conflicted and concerned about and want to be helpful with eventually in the future is that, you know, you've sort of seen these uh, nonprofit projects rise up a lot in communities that are relatively affluent, um, you know, where there's um, sort of a base of, of donor support to, to keep them afloat. Um, and, I, and I definitely and I think we, you know, I don't just speak for myself. I think I speak for a lot of the people connected to the current that we worry about. Um, places where a project like ours is not um, not as possible um, and, or as financially viable. So, um, you know, er, er, every city or town needs these. Um, you know, we're doing it in Marblehead now, but hopefully, we can uh, we can help other folks along who uh, who want to do this elsewhere. Before I get to my last question, uh, what are some of the ways that readers or businesses can get involved with the paper? Oh, well. I mean, obviously, go to uh, marbleheadcurrent.org and you can see our uh, our website, read some of our work, and there's all sorts of links in there. Um, you know, I, my colleagues would probably, uh, you know, get after me if I didn't point out the donate link. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We are trying to do this. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that we do have those traditional newspaper revenue um, opportunities in terms of ad sales and so forth, but we're largely trying to do this, not unlike NPR or, or uh, you know, uh, one of your PBS stations that holds uh, fundraising drives every once in a while. Trying to do it to a large degree off of uh, donations, like I said, that you know people see some value in our work. So, uh, so check out the uh, the donate button. Um, you can uh, email our newsroom at uh, info at uh, marbleheadnews.org and uh, with suggestions story ideas uh feedback positive or negative and uh yeah those are those are some of the ways that you can find us 